In this video, we're going to look at editing backgrounds in Pro Tools. As you can see, I have a basic Pro Tools session open with a couple of background clips already imported. We're going to start with the forest background, and I'll go ahead and drop it into my tracks list to both create a new track and place the clip at the session start. And you can see that this is quite a long clip, about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. For our purposes, we only need about 10 seconds out of this clip. First, let's make this track a little taller so we can see what we're doing. Then I'll go ahead and select about 10 seconds out of the clip. An easy way to do this is to simply click with the selector into the clip, then go to the selection indicators in the toolbar and simply click into the length field and enter a value of 10 seconds. And you can go ahead and audition that 10 seconds to see if it sounds like it can be looped. That sounds pretty good, so we'll go ahead and trim the clip to the selection. I can do this by either choosing Edit, Trim Clip, To Selection, or pressing Command-T on the Mac or Control-T on Windows. As you can see, this leaves me with just the selected 10 seconds on the playlist. And now I'll go ahead and use my Zoom Toggle command to zoom in on the selection. Now that you've trimmed the clip down to 10 seconds, there may be some content that you're not happy with. Pro Tools has a really cool function that lets you nudge the contents within the clip. If I simply hold down the control key on Mac or the start key on Windows, I can use the plus and minus keys on the numeric keypad to nudge the contents of the clip. For example, I can see that there's one little section of the waveform that might be noticeable when the clip is looping. I can use a content nudge to move that content out of the clip. And now I've got a nice steady background that should loop without being noticeable. The next thing we're going to do is loop the clip. So I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit because I'm going to duplicate this clip two times. And now you can see I have three copies of the clip on the playlist. Next, I'll go ahead and select all three iterations of the clip and bring up my Batch Fade dialog, which you can access from Edit, Fades, Create, or by pressing Command F on the Mac or Control F on Windows. In the Batch Fade dialog, we'll want to make sure that our link setting is set to equal power. The default in Pro Tools is equal gain, but that will create a noticeable dip when looping backgrounds. Then we'll adjust our fade length to something much longer, like 500 milliseconds. And click OK. And now you can see that the fades have been generated. The next thing we'll do is select the middle clip out of the three. Notice that when I select the middle clip, Pro Tools automatically selects halfway through each of the two crossfades. Now we've got a selection that should loop smoothly. When you're auditioning a selection that's more than a few seconds, it's a great idea to use Dynamic Transport. If I right-click on the Play button, I can choose Dynamic Transport from the pop-up menu. And then you'll see that I get an extra lane in my ruler where I can see the Play Start marker. If I click in that lane, I can move the marker closer to the end of the loop. That way, when I hit Play, I'm actually close to the end of the loop when I start. and I don't have to play back the whole 10 seconds just to see if my clip loops smoothly. This loop sounds good, so I'll go ahead and disable Dynamic Transport. Now we're ready to consolidate this selection so that the fades will be rendered into the clip. I can do this by choosing Edit, Consolidate Clip, or by using Option-Shift-3 on the Mac or Alt-Shift-3 on Windows. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and remove the first and the third instances of the clip. And what you'll be left with is just a single smoothly looping clip. Even though we've got a clip that loops smoothly, it's a good practice to zoom in and trim the clip to zero crossings. That way you won't have any surprises when you implement the clip in the game. The best way to do this is simply to select the clip and then use the number five zoom preset to zoom into the sample level. Before you start trimming, you'll definitely want to make sure that you're in slip mode. And now I'm ready to trim the start of the clip to a zero crossing. Now I simply hit the right arrow, and Pro Tools will jump me to the end of the clip. And it looks like it already ends on zero, but because my clip is starting on the way up, I want to make sure that the end of my clip is as well. And now let's go ahead and audition the clip one more time to make sure that it still loops smoothly with no pops or clicks.
Our final step is to normalize this clip to maximize the dynamic range of the resulting file. To open Normalize, I'll simply choose Audio Suite, Other, Normalize, and the Normalize plugin window will appear. And here you'll want to enter a peak value of minus 0.1 dB just to make sure that the resulting clip will not clip the mixer in your game audio engine. Now I'm ready to click the Render button. And now we can be certain that our clip has the widest possible dynamic range. Next, we'll give the clip its final name. There are several ways to do this, but the easiest is to simply double click on the clip. And now we're ready to export our clip using Export Clips as Files. And as always, you want to audition the clip in the Finder to make sure that it sounds the way you expect it to. And now you're ready to implement this background in the game engine.